sawing can be really hard work. It takes a lot of force to get this saw moving through the wood here. A lot of pulling and pushing. Well, you know, in science, that's what a force is. It's a pull or a push of some kind. I have to use forces to cut this wood with this saw. I pull and I push and I pull and I push and I pull and I push until finally I end up with what I need, a smaller piece of wood. Well, you use your own force to push and pull on all kinds of things. You use your own forces to open doors, write with a pencil or crayon, kick a ball, and really anything you do that moves your body or something else takes a push or a pull. It takes a force. Another place we use forces is on a swing, like this one. Whoa! We use pushing and pulling forces to get swings moving. First you start out by doing a little bit of pushing. And then you pull, and you push, and you pull, and you push, and you pull, until you really get things moving. Whoa! <laughs> you know, people aren't the only ones that use forces to push and pull on things. Well, take Chevy the dog here, for instance. One of the ways she likes to play is by pulling on her fuzzy pull toy here. She likes to try to wrestle it away, and when she gets it, oh, she's so happy. Well, lots of different kinds of living things like animals use forces to push, pull, and move things from one place to another. But there are plenty of other things that do too. Machines use pushing and pulling forces to turn things, build things, move things, and do work that might take a lot longer to do without them. Using forces to push and pull on things is very important to us. What types of pushing and pulling forces are important to you? There are lots of things around us that use forces to push and pull, like magnets. Magnets can pull on all kinds of things. Paper clips, nails, all kinds of metal stuff. Hmm. But not coins. They're not made out of the right kind of metal. When magnets pull on something, we say they attract the object. Did you know that magnets don't only pull on things though? They can also push on things, especially other magnets. When magnets are turned one way, they pull and attract, kind of like this. Hmm. But if you turn one of them in the opposite direction, they push instead. When magnets push away from each other, we say they repel. When we use magnets, it sure seems like they work like magic. But it's not magic, it's science. Another place where you can see forces at work is here at the beach. The force of the wind pushes and pulls on the water. That pushing and pulling makes waves. Then the waves push and pull on sand and rocks on the shore, forcing it all around in different directions. The force of the wind also pushes and pulls on clouds, and leaves on trees. It can even make for some pretty bad storms. Besides the wind, there are other forces that we deal with every day. One of them is keeping you right where you are right now. There are forces that pull us down, all the way down to the ground sometimes. That pulling force is called gravity. Everything has gravity, even you do. But the bigger something is, the more gravity it has. 
That's why really, really big things like the Earth we live on keep you from floating off into outer space. It's so huge and enormous that its gravity is able to keep you, all your friends, and everything around you in place. There are lots of different kinds of forces at work all around you, pushing and pulling, and you don't need to look too far to see forces at work. Huh? Headlines in science history. The year is 1649. The place, a small farmhouse in Lincolnshire, England. World famous scientist and mathematician Isaac Newton at age seven makes a startling discovery. While sitting quietly finishing his math homework beneath the tree outside his home, young Isaac is hit square on the head with a rather large and heavy falling apple. The gravity of this situation generated three puzzling questions in the mind of little Isaac. First, he wondered if gravity could reach the apple all the way up in the tree, could it also reach things way up in the sky? Second, if the apple had fallen from higher up, would it move faster and hurt his head more? And third, would his teacher really believe that a goat ate his math homework? This has been Headlines in Science History. <laughs> Have you ever used a tennis racket before? You use it to get these little yellow tennis balls moving. They have to go over a net in the middle of the court, like this. Um, usually, there's someone on the other side of the net. They try to hit the ball back. You score points, or they score points if someone misses or doesn't hit the ball the right way. It's not as easy as it looks. You really have to hit the ball with the right kind of force. If you don't use enough force, the ball doesn't make it over the net. If you use too much force, uh-oh, uh it may go over the fence, and then you'll have to go find it. Um, I better go find that. Ah, here it is. You know, when I hit this ball, it started going up in the sky where I forced it to go. But then it started to come back down. That's because most of the time there's more than just one force pushing or pulling on something at the same time. Do you remember what the force is called that pulls things down to the ground? It's gravity. Gravity pulled this ball right out of the sky. It's even pulling on the ball right now. So if I let it go, it falls. That's why people sometimes say, what goes up must come down. It doesn't always seem like gravity is at work pulling on things because other forces can keep stuff floating in the air sometimes. The kite that I'm flying here is using pushing and pulling forces from the wind to stay up. The force of the wind is always changing, getting stronger or weaker or changing directions. So the kite doesn't really sit in one place for very long. Because of that, eventually, once again, what goes up will come down. And this kite, oh no, will come down. It takes a lot of force to push a rocket into space. Some rockets bring people into space and back to Earth. There are also rockets that don't bring people into space at all. Some of those rockets send things way far out into space to study planets, stars, and other things. Those rockets never come back to Earth. T minus five, four, three, two, one, ignition, lift off, lift off. You use pushing and pulling forces in lots of ways that you probably never even thought were pushing and pulling. Like when you use scissors to cut paper. You force the scissors to open and close by moving your fingers and your thumb in different directions. That causes the sharp parts of the scissors to push their way through the paper. When you use something like scissors to change your force, you're using a machine. Machines make work easier for us. There. What do you think about when you hear the word machine? Do you think about really big machines? Do you think about washing machines? Or robots? 
or trucks? Those are all definitely machines, but most of those are complicated machines. Not all machines are that complicated though. Like this hammer. It's very simple and you might not have even thought of it as a machine, just a tool. Remember, we use machines to help change our force so it's easier to do work. And this hammer is a machine because it makes it easier to push nails in. Or pull them out. There are lots of different kinds of simple machines. A lever is a kind of simple machine. A lever can help us to lift things, move things, and even cut things. A pulley is another kind of simple machine. A pulley is a wheel with a groove that you can fit something in. Pulleys make it easier to do things like raise a flag. A wheel and axle is a kind of simple machine that has two parts. There's a wheel that turns and an axle, a kind of rod that's attached to it. A wheel and axle can be used to open a door or even turn on the water. Believe it or not, this ramp is another kind of simple machine. It's called an inclined plane. It makes it easier to move heavy things from one place to another without having to lift them. A screw is a kind of simple machine that makes it easier to move things from one place to another by turning. And a wedge can help us to chop things or cut things. They're all simple machines. Horses push and pull. A force is a push or a pull of some kind. Every time you move something, even yourself, you're using forces. Magnets use pulling forces to attract things, like paper clips. They also can use pushing forces to repel other magnets. The force of the wind pushes and pulls on things too. Gravity is a force that pulls things down to the ground. A small force can move small things, but it takes a large force to move very big things. Machines change forces in ways that make work easier for us. Some machines are very complicated, but there are also simple machines, like the lever, pulley, wheel and axle, the inclined plane, the screw, and the wedge. Forces keep us moving and help us to move other things. What kinds of things do you use forces to do? Whenever you build something or move something, it takes a force or many forces to make that happen. Forces push and pull and get things in motion. They make machines work and they can even change how things move. In a lot of ways, they really help us. You and me. Science and me.